My name is Brendan Harrison. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of California, Merced, and I'll be sharing my research on biotrichrome composting of dairy manure and how it substantially reduces methane and can also play a critical role in meeting climate goals. So methane is a greenhouse gas with a global warming potential 28 times that of CO2, and so it's critical that we reduce methane emissions as soon as possible as we transition away from fossil fuels. And I'd like to begin this presentation by going over two methane reduction policies. The first being the Global Methane Pledge, which was signed by about 100 countries at COP26 in 2021. And it requires a 30% reduction in methane by 2030. And the second is California's Short-Lived Climate Pollution Reduction Law, or SB 1383. And a component of this law requires a 40% reduction in methane emissions from dairy specifically by 2030. And because livestock are a leading source of methane emissions, both of these laws will require governments to reduce methane from animal agriculture. Dairy in particular is a leading source of methane emissions, especially in dairy intensive regions such as California, where about half of the state's methane emissions come from dairy. 25% of California's methane comes from dairy manure specifically, and this is largely due to intensive management practices at dairies in California, where dairy is often stored in anaerobic lagoons or stockpiles, which create low oxygen environments, which help to generate methane emissions. So dairy farmers have a couple options to reduce methane emissions from manure. One is through anaerobic digestion. And this basically consists of flushing liquid manure into large lagoons that are covered and gases are captured and converted into energy. And in these systems, it's common for solids to be separated out from the liquid manure that flows into a digester. And these solids are often stockpiled into large mounds that are hotspots for methane production. So aerobically composting dairy manure, instead of stockpiling it, can reduce methane emissions. But composting can still be a large source of methane emissions due to anaerobic hotspots that can form in a compost pile. So some studies have tested a technique called biochar composting, which consists of composting organic material together with charcoal or biochar, same thing. And evidence suggests that the high porosity of this biochar essentially aerates the compost pile, increasing oxygen concentration in the compost, which then drives down methane emissions. However, there had been no full-scale field studies uh, conducted testing this technique on a dairy farm before. So to address this research gap, we asked the question, does adding biochar to composting dairy manure reduce methane emissions? And we addressed this question by conducting a full-scale composting experiment on a dairy farm. We also asked the question, how does the life cycle climate impact of biochar composting? compared to either composting or stockpiling dairy manure. And we answer this question by creating a life cycle assessment model, which essentially sums up the net climate impact of a management uh, strategy. For our composting experiment, we measured greenhouse gas emissions daily from two compost piles, one with biochar added at a rate of 6% by mass, and the other without biochar. And the biochar we used was made from forestry waste. Uh, so it was a wood-based biochar, and it was produced at 900 degrees Celsius. And we also measured compost physical and chemical properties with either sensors or um, uh, samples taken weekly. For our life cycle assessment, we summed up the net climate impact associated with managing one metric ton of dairy manure through either biochar composting composting, or stockpiling. Our system boundary for this life cycle model begins with raw feedstock transportation to the dairy farm, and it ends with compost or manure application to the soil. We uh, incorporated our greenhouse gas emission data from our composting experiment, along with literature data to create these models. And finally, ecosystem impacts, such as soil nitrous oxide emissions or changes in plant biomass, were actually excluded from the model due to a lack of biochar compost field experiments where biochar compost is used as a soil amendment. So moving on to results, 
So these sh uh, figures show cumulative methane or CO2 emissions over the course of the composting experiment. The yellow line is the pile without biochar and the black line is the pile with biochar. So biochar composting reduced cumulative methane emissions by 84%. Differences in cumulative CO2 emissions were not statistically significant, although biochar had less CO2. And there were very low nitrous oxide emissions for both piles. These are our results for a life cycle assessment modeling net climate impact over 100 years. In this figure here, the colored bars represent different stages of the life cycle of each management strategy. Anything above the black line is a net source of emissions, and anything below the black line is a net sink of emissions. Barchar composting had the lowest climate impact with negative 535 kilograms of CO2 equivalent for every metric ton of dairy manure managed. Composting had negative 194, and stockpiling had positive 102. So in addition to reducing emissions from composting, which are shown in the blue bars, retro composting also enhanced carbon sequestration because of the high carbon stable biochar that we added to the compost. And biochar production is also often a way to generate renewable energy. And this was the case for the biochar that we used for this experiment. So this is an added climate benefit, and this is shown on the green bar there. When modeling net climate impact over the short term, so for the next two decades, and also only considering direct emissions, so no avoided emissions, biochar composting remains climate negative, whereas composting and stockpiling become net sources of emissions. And this is a significant finding as we work towards managing agroecosystems and waste systems to be net sinks of emissions rather than net sources of emissions. So we use our life cycle assessment results to model how biochar composting can help to meet methane reduction goals. So again, California's SB 1383 requires a 40% reduction in methane by 2030. And this comes to 9 million metric tons of CO2 equivalent per year. And this is marked by the red dotted line in this figure. So this is the goal. And if California primarily relies on anaerobic digesters to meet this goal, which is their current strategy, they would need 725 digesters built by 2030. However, there are only 799 dairies actually large enough to house digesters. And on top of that, digesters can be expensive and logistically challenging to engineer. So this high digester adoption rate may be unlikely. However, if biochar composting is used to manage manure solids at a dairy farm instead of stockpiling them, this additional methane reduction allows the state to meet its goal with 598 digesters. And finally, this, the state's dairy herd size is declining by 0.5% every year. If this increases to 1% every year, which could happen due to changes that we're seeing in consumer behavior, and if we also factor in biochar composting to manage manure solids, the state could meet its goal with 483 digesters, which would allow California to meet SB 1383 without having to rely on very high digester adoption rates by farmers. We also estimate the role that biochar composting can play in helping to meet the global methane pledge for the dairy industry. So if biochar composting replaces stockpiling of manure solids, at intensive dairies globally, so dairies with over 100 cattle. The global dairy greenhouse gas mitigation potential increases from about 150 to 300 teragrams of CO2 equivalent per year, so nearly doubles. And at the same time, methane mitigation potential increases from about 4.5 to 6.1 teragrams of methane per year. So this is a large reduction in methane However, in developing countries, we're seeing an increase in dairy consumption that's predicted to increase methane emissions by about 4.5 teragrams of methane per year by the end of the decade. So if the dairy industry is to comply with the Global Methane Pledge, we might have to see developed countries reduce their dairy consumption in addition to implementing these mitigation practices. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our current work, which is looking at 
biochar co-composting to not only reduce methane, but to also reduce air pollution from composting. So this project was inspired by our first project. When we were out there on the dairy farm, we could smell the difference between these compost piles. And this is really summed up by this, these photos here. The photo on the left is the compost pile without biochar, and you can clearly see tons of flies on it. Um, those are one of our gas collars you're seeing. And on the right, I took this, these pictures at the same time. Um, virtually no flies on the biochar compost pile. So we did repeat this experiment, and we found that, again, biochar composting substantially reduced methane emissions, and it also reduced hydrogen sulfide emissions, and interestingly, NOx emissions, which were very high from the compost piles. The biochar did reduce it by a lot. And we're, we're still working on this project. Our VOC data is um, not quite done yet, but the results also look promising. To conclude, biochar composting is an effective complement to anaer anaerobic digestion, creating a system where both solid and liquid manure is managed for methane reduction. Biochar composting can be a powerful untapped natural climate solution with multiple climate benefits that might also reduce air pollution emissions from composting. And finally, mitigation strategies alone are likely not going to be enough for the dairy industry to meet climate goals there might also be a need for a reduction in dairy consumption from developed countries. I'd like to thank my co-authors, the UC Merced Biochar Research Group, the Riles Agroecology Lab, Align Digesters, Philip Airway Dairy, and the California Strategic Growth Council for funding this work. And if you'd like to learn more about this study, it was published re recently in Environmental Science and Technology. And I'd also like to just briefly talk about this paper that actually was published today. Um, and in this paper, we use our compost from our composting study as a soil amendment. So we're tracking this compost um, to its final stage. And we compare biochar compost to pure compost to biochar. So we're looking at these separating out these amendments and just briefly, some of the highlights from this paper. What we found is that biochar co-compost had the highest total biomass. Uh, this is a wheat, um, a wheat field that we uh, were working on. So it had the highest total biomass, the highest water holding capacity for soil, the lowest nutrient leaching, and it was tied with biochar for the lowest greenhouse gas emissions. Um, this is all relative to the control. Um, and with that, uh, I'll take any questions. Thank you. So we've got actually time for plenty of questions this time. Hi, so um, I'm from New York State, and we're looking at similar processes. Um, I'm curious if you've looked at the particle size of biochar that you're using, and if you think that that particle size is important. Yeah, so the question is, is the particle size important and have we looked at that for biochar composting? I think it is important um, because biochar can range in particle size from being almost a dust to being a, a branch of wood. Right, um, very much. Right, so um, we didn't look at that for that experiment. We did conduct a laboratory scale experiment where we used different types of biochars and these biochars vary in particle size. Um, we didn't find a big difference between them. Uh, maybe the difference in size wasn't large enough. We did see a big difference with application rate, though, and this work um, has been recently submitted, so that'll be anything else. So on average, what does your biochar look like? Is it more on the dust size? Is it like a few centimeters, or is it like bigger? Uh, yeah, about a few centimeters. It's, it's not dust, um, at least for the... Um, we, we, we always use different types of biochars. For the biochar composting experiment that I'm presenting on here, um, it's forestry waste, so it was um, pretty, yeah, a couple centimeters. So it was like chipped wood. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes? What percent biochar was used in the compost? Can you uh, also repeat the question? Yeah. What, so what percent biochar was used in the compost? It was 6% by wet mass was the in initial mixing ratio. So a small amount. Uh, you 
Yes, it, yes. It well, will you repeat the question? So, is there a follow-up question? Uh, that, that's not. Okay. So, yes.